Alright guys, welcome back, and in this video, I want to start talking to you about int and float arrays. Now, there are actually a lot of differences between int and float arrays and character arrays, so I'm just going to cover those in this video and probably, maybe even the next video, I'm not sure, who the heck knows. So, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a basic array looping through and showing you guys the differences and where you might get stuck up on them. So int i, that's just going to be my counter whenever I loop through them. Now, of course, just like a uh, character array, what you do is you put the data type, and I'm just going to make a simple int array, which is going to hold integers, and I'm going to name it meatballs. Now, in between the brackets, of course, you write how many elements you want to hold. Now, whenever you want to populate your array, what you do is you use curly braces and you pretty much type a list of numbers in here. So I just put 7, 9, uh, like 43, 21. Now this, of course, is called initializing the array. Pretty much the spot where you um, create the array. Simple enough. Now, one other major difference I want to point out is int and float arrays are different than character arrays because they don't have that null character at the end. They don't have that null zero. So that's uh, more for the internal stuff but you probably should remember that because it's gonna come up later if you try to get the size of the array or anything like that or you're looping through it and it doesn't seem quite right so just remember whenever you're working with numbers in an array there is no null zero that's just for strings and character arrays so now let's go ahead and make a for loop so I can uh, show you guys what up and in zero and I'll put i is less than four and I++. Plus plus. And in a second I'll show you guys how to populate an array through a loop. It's kind of different than this line right here. But for now we'll just print F. And what can we do? We'll put like element percent D and then we'll put percent D and for the first one we'll just print out I which is whatever loop we're on. In the second one will access an individual element using meatball and of course just like before we put the elements name in between square brackets so actually let me put a new line here and print this bad boy out so just like before starts at zero one two three that means it has four elements total seven nine forty three twenty one and again no no zero at the end so I guess we have time for it in this tutorial so now what I want to show you guys how to do is populate an array using a loop because even though this is really simple syntax right here it's not very useful and also not very practical sometimes you're going to want to read through a database or you're going to want to let the user enter a series of numbers through the keyboard so I'll show you guys how to do that so we can actually get rid of this right here and let's make a, an array with five in it that'll be a little bit better a little bit more even for my ADD Alright, so let's just go ahead and build a simple program where we let the user enter five numbers, we store it in an array, and we'll say we, we'll calculate the average or something. So we'll say that the user is going to enter how many meatballs they ate, and we'll calculate the average of, you know, how that means you ate this many per day. Simple enough. So we got int i for our counter, int meatballs is going to be how many they ate. And of course, whenever we're calculating average, we need total balls, which is going to hold the total amount. Just set that to zero for now. All right, so pretty much every single loop, we'll go ahead and give them prompts. Be like, um, how many meatballs did you eat on day percent D? And kick that to a new line. And then since this is going to start with zero what we want to do is put i plus one and this isn't going to change the value of i it's just going to display whatever the current value is plus one so it's perfect um, it'll be better for the user to see what the heck is going on so now let's uh, give them an area where they can scan in a number that they entered and of course we want to store this in meatballs So ampersand and I 
looking good. So basically right now, whatever they enter, and they're gonna enter it one by one, it's gonna be stored in meatballs, in first meatball zero, all the way to meatballs four. So now we have a populated array, an array full of numbers. So the only thing we have to do now is loop through the same way we did before, but now we're gonna use those numbers to calculate the average. So we're gonna store the total number right here and for each element of the array, we pretty much add it to total balls. Total balls, kind of funny, funny variable name. All right, so say we enter one, two, three, four, five. It's gonna add one, then two, then three, then four, then five, until total balls now equals the total amount of balls. So now we have to get the average of those. So int, make a new variable for our average and set this equal to, of course, you guys know how to calculate average. The total over how many days? Well, we inputted five different numbers, so that means five different days. And now we just print this crap out on the screen. So the first, well, what can we do? We'll just put uh, something simple. Put you eight um, percent meatballs total that's um an average of percent d per day simple enough looks all right so the first one is u8 total give them their total first and their average is of course the average let me kick that to a new line because it's bugging me and actually i want to put this on new line give myself a little bit of space to work with so now, if everything looks good, all right, I think I'm good to go. So how many meatballs did you eat on day one? Uh, I only ate 12. On day two, I ate, I was pretty hungry that day, 98. Day three, 561. Um, on day four, I only ate two. And on day five, I ate uh, 66. So I ate 739 meatballs total. And this is uh, actually pretty accurate because I do love uh, meatballs. I get like a meatball sub every other day. Average 147 per day. Pretty sweet. And that again is how you let the user enter or populate an array manually. And whenever you're reading like from a Excel file or a comma separated file, you're pretty much going to use the same concept of taking um, pieces of data and entering it into an array but it's going to be slightly different. But now that you understand the concept, it's going to be really easy to understand later on. So uh, for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my website. I'll see you later.